Hello and welcome to 3D Jewelry Modeling with Fialo Design. My name is Geza and today I'm going to show you how to model this 3D jewelry ring. This tutorial is completely done in Blender and it assumes that you have at least some basic knowledge about navigation and the interface. So, let's go! Right mouse button to select the default cube, press X to delete it. Now press 7 on your numpad, Shift A and text. Press tab for edit mode and now you can just type in like in a normal text editor the words you want. I would recommend something that is not too short and has maybe around 9 to 10 characters, otherwise the text won't fit around your finger properly because the standard font is not very beautiful to look at, we will now change the font. And for this, you go into this menu where you can see the A letter, and then you can choose the font from Windows or some other font you've downloaded before. Now, our text is still only text, but we need it in another format to properly edit it. And for that, you go to Object, Convert to, and select Mesh from Curve. After pressing tab again, we can now work with the individual letters. In this case, I use B for box select and then I press Ctrl L to select the whole letter. Press G and now you can move the selection so that all letters are overlapping. This is a very important step because for ring we want to have all the letters nicely connected so they form a single ring band. By pressing S and shifting my mouse, I can scale the letters individually or as a group. To move the letters along the red x-axis, you can press X after pressing G for moving. Being done with that, hit space, type in lim and click limited dissolve. This will tidy up all the extra lines and vertices we don't need at the moment. While having everything selected, press E and pull out another layer of vertices. That way, we have a 3D version of our letters now. Now, I'm going to create a circle which we will use to wrap the ring band around. Check that your cursor is right in the center with Shift C, hit Shift A, Curve, and choose Circle. Now, because we want to make a ring for a finger, it is important that this circle has the proper radius for the ring size that you're going for. So first align to view so you can view it better and then type in the radius that you are going to need for your finger. In this video I will assume that you know your ring size and the radius that you need accordingly. Otherwise check the links in the description for some help with that. I need a circumference of a little bit more than 51 millimeters and therefore I choose 8.2 as radius. To make the letters wrap nicely around the circle First, select the letters with the right mouse button, then click on the modifier properties, the blue wrench, click add modifier, choose curve, and then use the eyedropper tool inside the modifier to left click on the bezier circle. You may need to activate it in real time viewport. Of course, it does not quite look right yet, so I scale it down a little bit with S and moving my mouse in the desired direction, and then unwrap it again for now. Right click on any vertice on a letter, Ctrl L and press P and selection. This is necessary to separate all the individual letters into individual objects. At this point some of you may ask, why are we doing this? Why don't we just wrap the whole thing around the circle without separating the letters? Uh, well, it's simple because if you do this before, you will have a much nicer time to pull it all together after wrapping it around our circle. So if you don't quite get it yet, just follow along and you will see what I mean. I deleted the dot from the J. I also moved the J a bit to make it fit better into the overall style of the ring. Now each individual letter should still have the curve modifier attached and if you click on the little screen symbol to make it viewable in the viewport you will also see it wrap around our circle very nicely. Having one of the letters selected, press tab, alt z to make it see through and select all the vertices on the downside of the letter and pull it out just a little hair, not much. 
don't use all B like I did because this will be your selection mask, but just B and with G and pulling your mouse down just a little bit. Now this is because if you boost something, it tends to behave strangely if the vertices are exactly in the same plane. And if you just put them a little bit apart, they will behave much nicer. Now, of course, the same holds true for the upper part of the letters. So you can do the same here. Select with B and G every second next letter up just a bit. Do the thingamajig with the vertices again so that they don't align perfectly. I am working in millimeters, the little boxes behind the letters you can see are millimeters, so I'm actually pulling them out less than one tenth of a millimeter here. And this will anyway will get corrected after pulling it all together. Nice! In this part, I made a very crucial mistake. This consisted of first pulling all the letters together and then wrapping them instead of doing it the other way around. This resulted in the Y and the three, so the first and the last letter, which were touching in the ring, not being pulled together and they were intersecting. And when you have self-intersecting geometry, then you have a problem basically in Blender. It's always better to avoid this. So I started again from scratch, or rather from the version I cleverly saved before I started pooling the letters together. Here we are again, and as you can see, I am now wrapping the individual letters, each with their own curve modifier around the Bezier circle. The three and Y are still intersecting, but now we can just pull them together in this position. What I'm doing now is apply the curve modifier to each individual letter so they stay fixed in this position. And now to pull them together, select one of the letters, choose add modifier, boolean, union, and use the eyedropper tool to select the next letter. Apply and on to the next one. After each individual booling process, I often tend to look for any errors in the geometry by pressing tab and checking out if there are any intersections left that are in need of any corrections. And that's why booling together everything sometimes takes a little while. It can also sometimes be helpful to set the overlap threshold in the Boolean modifier to zero, because in the small dimensions we are working on right now, this can often make the difference between working and not working. And there we are, our letters are all connected and form one slightly messy union and now I select all the individual letters that are still there and delete those because we don't use them anymore. It's often helpful to save one extra file in this stage to avoid losing the individual letters should some errors still come up. The next step is select the Bezier circle for the ring size, duplicate it with Shift D. Pull it a little bit on the y-axis, press object and convert to mesh from curve. With tab you can go to edit mode, select the individual vertices and use E to pull them through your ring. Now you have this nice cylinder in the approximate size of your finger. With the ring of vertices still selected, press shift E and 1. This will make the vertices unaffected by the subdivision modifier, as you will see right now. I have left one uncreased and there you can see this looks strange, so I select this one with Alt right mouse button and also crease it with Shift E and 1. I also pressed F while having one ring selected to close up the cylinder. With the ring selected, now choose Add Modifier, Boolean and choose the difference. Use the eyedropper tool to select the cylinder. And now when you turn it on, you see that the ring inside has this nice cylindrical shape and not the hard edges anymore that were there before. If you go into edit mode, you will see that the inside has now one smooth continuous surface, just like the outside of the cylinder we just created. Of course, to make the outside of the ring equally beautiful, we will now duplicate the Bezier circle another time. I will now scale it up and make it just a little bit smaller than the outside edges of the ring. 
with this in place, you can again convert it to mesh and do the same process as before. You can pull it out, make it so that it covers all the ring. Then when having everything selected, press E again and then scale with S. In this way, you will get now a cylinder with a hole in the middle. Select the ring again, choose Boolean, Difference, and use the eyedropper to select the cylinder. Wow, doesn't that look very nice? But oh, we have some mistakes on the surface area. It seems because of the complexity, Blender sometimes has problems with booling things correctly. And this is why I always tend to give a file version of the unbooled last stage, because now I can just revert and go to the cylinder again to see what has caused the error. One of the steps I choose for bug fixing, so to speak, is go into this yellow menu where you can change the display options for an object. In this case, I choose a wireframe for the cylinder to make it see-through and to let me look at what will happen when I scale it. I noticed that Blender had some problems with a cylinder in this size, so I tried scaling it up and down and see if the Boolean process would work. After watching this a few times, I decided to just make the ring a little bit thinner because it would just make the whole thing a lot easier. Maybe it was because some vertices were still overlapping inside the bold one and I still had around two millimeters left as thickness. This is why I also tend to make the things a little bit thicker in the beginning because they will get filed and send it down after printing and casting anyway. Through this I was now left with a beautiful surface on the in and the outside of the ring. Sometimes it's really best to just go with the flow and not to overcomplicate things, especially in Blender. By the way, I found out something interesting. Out of curiosity and scientific interest, I reversed to the stage where I just created the cylinder and I wasn't quite sure if there wasn't a problem with the normals, which means sometimes the faces of an object can be flipped which can lead to unexpected and erroneous behavior in booleans. After doing this for the ring itself, I was curious about the cylinder. So I selected the cylinder and I actually found out that the face on the bottom of the cylinder had double vertices. I don't know how I created them, but they were just there and I fixed it through clicking vertex in the upper menu, go to merge vertices and choose by distance. This normally helps to merge any vertices that are so close together they can be considered doubles. Then I did the whole thing with a cylinder again to just make sure I did not overlook any problems or anything else that might screw up my precious print result. And after double checking that all the normals weren't flipped again, it was actually ready. I think it looked pretty good. Everything that was left now was export the STL version of the file so it would be able to be printed and cast. So guys, and that was it. Please tell me in the comments what you think. If you like it, give this video a thumbs up or maybe subscribe. And also, please show your creations. I would love to see it. Have a nice day, happy creating and see you in the next video.